when I was debating to leave my well-paying 9 to 5 job in order to pursue content creation full-time. There were a lot of things I needed to figure out before putting in my two weeks notice. I wanted to line up some consistent work for my first few months out on my own. I knew I was going to need to set aside some money to pay quarterly taxes. And of course, I had to figure out what the heck I was going to do about health insurance. I have a real treat for you today because I'm bringing on an expert to answer all of your burning health insurance questions so you can make sure you choose an insurance plan that works best for you. If you're new here, I'm a fashion and beauty micro influencer based in New York City, and I use this channel to help you create great content, grow your digital brand, and earn sustainable income from content creation. So if any of that interests you, please consider subscribing. Now, let's be honest, health insurance can seem intimidating, and if the rest of the cards are lining up for you to finally make the leap to be self-employed, you don't want health insurance to be the thing that holds you back from doing that. At the time I quit my job as an unmarried person, over the age of 26 who couldn't rely on my parents, my partner, or my company's insurance plans, I was beyond confused when it came to what to do for health insurance. In fact, in some ways, it was really holding me back, and I won't lie when I tell you I waited unfortunately until the last possible minute until I had to do something about it to really make a decision. But a lot has changed since I made that move, and I think it's changed for the better because today we have so many more options to choose from as self-employed people or as freelancers. I am so beyond excited to be partnering with Healthy by HBG on today's video. Today I'm sitting down with Kylie from the HBG team to answer questions you submitted for this video and also some insurance questions that I had. We're answering questions like why health insurance is really important, what a deductible is once and for all, and some of the biggest misconceptions about health insurance in the United States. Let's get right into my conversation with Kylie. All right, everyone. So today I am joined here with Kylie Morrissey, who is here to help you answer all of your burning health insurance questions. So Kylie is the director of marketing at Healthy Business Group, an organization working to make healthcare and other coverage options easy to enroll in and more affordable for all through their product, Healthy by HBG. Kylie, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. We are so excited to have you and get started because health insurance, especially when you're self-employed, can feel like a really intimidating topic for a lot of people, especially here in the U.S. where it feels like the rules of the game can change all the time. So just to start out, so everyone who's watching really understands, could you tell us a little bit about why having health insurance is so important? Because sometimes it feels so confusing that we're like, hmm, nope, pass, let's not even go into it. Right. It's a very complicated industry. So having health coverage is important because it allows you to get help when you're sick from a doctor. And you can do that now on your phone if you're really sick in your bed, or you can go to the doctor's office. It's also important so that you can get preventive screenings and preventive care because having those age appropriate and gender appropriate screenings can save your life by detecting early cancers or other illnesses. It can also save you a lot of money in the future because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, that's so true. And honestly, like even sometimes, you know, especially I know for women, I hear friends who say, oh, I just went to like go get my yearly screening just to check everything out. And it's always so much easier to deal with when you catch something early. And it can be a little scary, of course, to like go to a doctor and actually hear all of those things and start to think about preventative stuff. But when you know what you're working with, you have so much more information at your disposal to really like make sure you can take care of things quickly. Definitely. There's totally a reason why doctors recommend certain things yearly. And um, it's really important to get those screenings done. Sure thing. And speaking of like yearly timing wise, when we think about when to enroll in health insurance or when we even are able to get coverage, what does that usually look like timing wise? And do you need like a qualifying life event, like leaving your job, getting married or any particular reason other than like open enrollment to actually be able to sign up for an insurance program? That's a great question because a lot of plans work differently. So if you're enrolling in a plan from the state exchange, there could be qualifying life event clauses and open enrollment periods that you have to look at. At Healthy by HBG, we design our plans to be as flexible as the freelance lifestyle. So you can enroll at any time throughout the year. So there's no open enrollment periods. If you enroll by the 25th of the month or make a change to your plan by the 25th of the month, it'll be effective for the following first of the month. That is so great. And I 
love that you said it's flexible the same way like the freelance lifestyle is because I know for me just the timing of when I personally left my job I left in April 2021 and that wasn't near that you know November enrollment right. period that we're used to and it was very complicated to kind of figure out okay so my insurance will only last for like 30 days after I leave. Mm -hmm. Like, how do I figure out what to do next? And yeah, it's, it's, it's great to hear that there's that flexibility there because like you said, it aligns so well with being self-employed. Yeah. And I'm, you can't plan for those things usually. And you're not real when you're leaving a job or starting a new venture, you're not really thinking like, Oh, when's the open enrollment period in my state? So that allows for a lot of flexibility. We also have a team of support agents that can answer any questions. They're not there to sell you anything. They'll just field your questions and see if these plans are right for you and push you in the right direction. That is so great to hear. And actually going back to like, I know for me, when I quit my job, I was mainly just kind of thinking about the next steps of my creative career. And I was very excited about that and tried as much as I could to like look in advance and see if there was anything I really needed to know. But I have mm -hmm. to say, I probably did not plan as well as I could have at that time. So for anyone out there who maybe isn't self-employed yet, but is thinking about potentially making that leap, what advice would you have or what should someone consider who is thinking about leaving their job when it comes to health insurance? I would say that when leaving your job and thinking about your healthcare options, you should think about how often you see a doctor. Do you have pre-existing conditions? Some plans do have clauses that have waiting periods for those pre-existing conditions. What medications do you take and are those medications covered on the plans that you're looking at? Um, my biggest piece of advice would always be to review the documents thoroughly and make sure that you're comfortable in enrolling that in the plan that you're choosing. Yeah, that's such a good point because I know like for me, I usually do my annual checkups, but I don't need to do tons of frequent visits to doctors. So when I was first looking, I was definitely looking for something that covered my basic needs, a medication like you mentioned too, but mm -hmm. that didn't necessarily have to be overly complicated. And of course that can totally vary depending on your own situation. But even that question that you said, how often am I going to the doctor? Like that can be a really good reference point for someone to start to make those decisions. Yeah. And those, like the answers to those questions could help you guide you into a plan. Like if you're only seeing a doctor for preventive services and you don't have a lot of medications or pre existing conditions, you can probably get by with a lower cost option because there's a big correlation between price and coverage with health insurance. And I guess that makes sense, right? The more you need, mm -hmm. the more it might end up costing you. So that that totally makes sense. Okay, so moving on, how can you easily find health insurance as a freelancer? Because I think there's also this notion that maybe it varies from state to state or that, you know, there aren't that many options out there. So what is the process of finding your insurance plan look like? Our plans are geared towards the individual making it the perfect place for a freelancer to find coverage. And as I said before, they're very flexible. You can upgrade, downgrade, or cancel at any month throughout the year. We do support the exchange plans as well. So if you have questions and think that our plans aren't right for you, one of our support agents can get you over to the exchange and make sure that you're getting the coverage that you need. Well, and that's what I also like really appreciate about you guys as a company too, is you're just willing to help people find the answer that they're looking for, whether or not like you're the right fit. And obviously you guys have so many great options and what you said in terms of the flexibility, like the ability to upgrade and downgrade and not feel locked in. That's really big for a lot of people just because mm -hmm. life can be unexpected and you never know what is around the corner if something changes. And I just really hope like appreciate about that with, with what you guys offer. Yeah, and we found the com we founded the company during the pandemic, so a lot of people were leaving their jobs, focusing on passion projects full time and just needing that flexibility and not knowing where to turn. So, we hope to be helpful in that space. Yes, and also if you're a fellow participant of the great resignation like I was, leave a comment <laughs> down below on this video. I would be curious to hear how many of you out there became self-employed during the pandemic. <laughs> 
And then one other thing that self-employed people are always thinking about is tax write-offs and tax breaks. So is health insurance a tax write-off or what does that look like in terms of maybe a self-employed person's overall business plan? That's a great question. So generally the premiums on your health insurance plan are tax deductible, but I would always recommend consulting your tax accountant or tax advisor when making these decisions because states may have different limitations. And just so you know, the premium is the amount of money you spend each month on the health plan. Awesome. That's great advice. And then I know sometimes too, for health insurance plans, there are different tiers or different, you know, bronze, silver, like we're in the Olympics or something. So (laughs) what should someone look for when they are comparing and contrasting some of the different tiers and various options within a plan that they might be looking at? So I would recommend thinking down the line within that plan year, because most plans are annual plans. As I said before, there is a huge correlation between cost and coverage with healthcare plans. Think about what you need covered. Are you planning to have a baby in the future? That is something that is normally not covered on a lower cost option. That totally makes sense. And especially when, you know, sometimes things happen sooner than you expect. Sometimes things happen later than you expect. So just understanding that and thinking ahead to what does the next year look like for you? It's almost like setting goals, which is something I'm a really big fan of doing. Right. Are you planning on getting a surgery? Are there procedures that you've been putting off? Those are all things that you should think about. And just, I mean, I love a list. Go through each plan and make sure that you're comfortable with what you're signing up for and that it covers what you need. That's so helpful to know. And another question that I feel like comes up Time and time again, this is kind of, I'm going to ask you to define a term that I feel like I should fully have a grasp on by now, but I always like to just clarify. So once and for all, what is a deductible? A deductible is the amount of money that you as an individual are responsible to pay before the insurance starts kicking in funds and covering your expenses. So plans are all different and you can have deductibles on prescriptions, you can have them on services. So just make sure you're clear before you sign up on what you have to spend and if you're comfortable with that number. We also have a plan that partners with the health share and that cost in a health share is called an initial unshareable amount or an IUA. Wow. That is actually the clearest I've ever heard it explained to me. And I feel like I've asked my dad, I've asked my fiance. So thank you so much for actually breaking it down for us. Moving along. So I did the thing. I put on my big girl pants and I signed up for a health insurance plan. Now I need to actually like make some appointments. So do you have any tips for us for finding providers who actually accept your insurance and and how to make sure that they will take your plan. Of course, there are a few ways to do this and all are pretty easy. So you can go to the carrier's website and search by your zip code and the specialty of doctor that you need. You can call your current physicians and ask what networks they participate in and if they participate in your network. You can also use a website called ZocDoc where you can put in your zip code check off that they're accepting new patients and find highly rated doctors in your area, which is always great. All of our plans come with access to Rightway Healthcare and Rightway Healthcare is a healthcare concierge app that you can use on your phone to help you find highly rated in-network doctors, facilities, they can book your appointments and they could even check the bills for you. They're really a lifesaver in this crazy world of healthcare. You just take a screenshot or a photo of your bill, send it to them, say check for accuracy and they'll make sure everything's okay and make sure that you know what you can expect to pay when going to the doctor. Because like we said before, the deductibles can be very confusing and they can track your deductible for you and all of that, as well as find in network doctors. So whichever way you choose out of those different ways of finding a network doctors, they're all pretty easy. My God, I am so grateful to live in 2023 and a time where we have things like this that exist. And I don't know if it's just the millennial in me, but I just hate making phone calls like to the doctor's office. It is so unnecessarily stressful for some reason. And so hearing about Brightway and ZocDoc is really helpful and 
just gives us more options and helps like streamline the process, which we all really appreciate. Yes, definitely. And with right way, you'll never have to call a doctor to even make an appointment, which is nice because I'm the same way. I hate picking up that phone and scheduling and all that. Yes, that is the world that I would like to live in. (laughs) Great. And then another question for you is, you know, what's the biggest misconception would you say about health insurance? Because I feel like we've already debunked a lot of maybe some of the fears or things that people had originally thought about health insurance. Hopefully we have here, but Overall, is there anything that you think is generally confusing or misunderstood with when it comes to health insurance? I think the biggest misconception is that finding individual health insurance is really hard to find and really expensive. If you do the research and ask the right questions, you can usually find a plan that can fit in your budget. It's just really important to figure out how you can best use the plan. All right. Well, Kyla, you have very patiently answered all of my questions. Is there anything else that you want to add before we wrap up and let people know where they can find you? Just that our support agents are available to answer any of your healthcare related questions. They're not salespeople. So you'll get on the phone and get your questions answered and hopefully get some guidance. Austin's going to put that link in the description of this video. And I think that's all I have to add. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok. It's healthy with two E's by HBG on both platforms. That is so great. And you guys can be sure to click the link down below for more information as well. And obviously we love any company that has a TikTok account. So (laughs) definitely be sure to check out Healthy by HBG. And Kylie, thank you so much again for your time today and for answering all of our burning health insurance questions. Of course. Thank you for having me. All right, I don't know about you, but I learned a lot from that conversation. I am so grateful to companies like HBG who are making insurance affordable and accessible for those of us with an entrepreneurial spirit who have chosen to go down the self-employment path. Now, we covered a lot today, but if you have any lingering hesitations or something that wasn't addressed in today's video, as Kylie mentioned, the HBG team is around for support. So you can bring all of your questions directly to them and make sure that you get the answers that you need. Be sure to use the link down below in the description box to get in touch with the HBG support team and get all of your insurance questions answered. Don't forget to check out Healthy by HBG on all of their socials, also linked down below. And thank you again to HBG for partnering with me on today's video. And I'd love to hear from you. What other experts or topics like this would you like to see covered on my channel in the future? Please leave me a comment down below and let me know. If you'd like to learn more about how I financially prepared to take content creation full time, check out the up next recommendation on the screen. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.